What time is it? Say it's time for KP's video news. KP's video news. It's KP's video news, y'all. It's KP's video news, y'all. That's right, it's KP's video news, y'all. And I'm getting ready to hit you with some more history. You now I'd like to do it. So, uh, there, there has been a lot of a lot of things going on in the world, and as you know about all the uh, situation with George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Armand Arbery, and uh, a lot, you know, numbers, scores upon scores of black people that are dying from the coronavirus, and this right here is going to be a history of the uh, the terrible, terrible uh, disparities, man between uh you know what why 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 the black black people in america have such bad health and i'm going all the way back man i'm going all the way back so so if you uh lost in that view however is a historical historical uh perspective and if you look back to the late 18th century to the very beginnings of the united states and you will see that uh black lives in this country didn't seem to matter at all foremost among the unrelenting uh, cruelties heaped upon enslaved people with the lack of health care for them. Infants and children fared especially, uh, especially poor. After childbirth, mothers were forced to return to the fields as soon as possible, often having to leave their infants without care or food. The infant mortality rate was estimated at one time to be as high as 50 percent. Adult people who were enslaved who showed signs of exhaustion or depression were often beaten. As a uh, professor of uh, social work and uh, studied ways to stop racism, promote justice, and to help the black community empower itself, a relationship exists between the health of enslaved blacks and the making of America. And it's a racist medical history. And white masters, often brutal and violent, dehumanized the enslaved people who worked for them and became wealthy from their work. Slaveholders justified their treatment by relying on the widely accepted view of black inferiority and the physical differences between blacks and whites. Racist medical theory, the uh, racist notion that the blacks were uh, inherently inferior and animal-like who needed maltreatment to be sound for work was a critical element. Enslaved people were poorly fed, overworked, and overcrowded, which uh, promoted germ transmission. So did their housing, bare, cold, windowless, or, clo uh, or close to it. Because they were not paid, slaves could not uh, maintain personal hygiene. Clothes went unwashed, baths were infrequent, dental care was limited, and beds remained unclean. Body lice, ringworm, and bed bugs were common. This treatment began in slave dungeons built by Europeans on the coastal shores of Africa where enslaved blacks awaited shipment to the New World. In Ghana, for example, perhaps 200 were uh, closeted in tiny spaces where they ate, slept, urinated, and defecated. Archaeological uh, research has shown the dirt floors were soaked with vomit, urine, feces, and menstrual blood. Conditions with the, within the dungeons were so deadly that cleaning them was discouraged. Those who tried uh, risk smallpox and in, intestinal uh, infections. Slicks, uh, sick slaves rarely saw doctors. Diseases among the enslaved people in the, in the colonies and later the states were common and at a disparate rate when compared to whites, typhus, measles, mumps, chickenpox, typhoid, and more. Only at the last resort did the slave owner bring in a doctor. Instead, the white master and his wife would provide the health care, though rarely were either one trained physicians. Old enslaved women also helped and uh, brought their knowledge of herbs, roots, plants, and midwifery from Africa to the Americas. As with everything else, blacks had no say about their care, and if a doctor was involved, black patients were not necessarily told anything about their condition. The medical report went directly to the slave owner. Black women played multiple roles, of course. They were part of the labor force and they took care of the sick, but they were also the machinery for producing more black babies. 
After the mid-Atlantic slave trade was banned, slave owners needed a new uh, source of labor and pregnant and slave uh, women provided that possibility. The birth of a baby born, born into slavery meant profits that potentially lasted generations, a product requiring little investment and a terrifying medical research. Some of the black women were used in medical experiments. Much of the research, sidebar here, now this is what I've been telling you people about this whole thing about them coming up with this coronavirus vaccine. Uh, if they come, if, if, you, if you, for some reason you have to go to the hospital or a doctor's office and they give you a form that's, that, that states uh, uh, that they want you to give a, a, a decree, they want you to, to sign a decree paperwork and they want you to give uh, that them give them permission a permission decree whatever you do don't sign it because if you do they'll be using you you as a guinea pig to uh uh as a guinea pig with their their coronavirus experiments okay back to the story some of the black women were used in medical experiments much of the research some co uh, conducted without anesthesia focused on maternal health as the white scientists inflicted tremendous pain on the pregnant women. The infants being carried sometimes died. Uh, through the torture of these enslaved women, many white physicians and white medical institutions gained considerable fame and wealth. Adverse health consequences for blacks facilitated the establishment of some medical advances, such as the, the intervention, uh, invention of the speculum for gynecological exams. One enslaved woman reportedly endured 30 gynecological surgeries without anesthesia. Medical interests, also economic and political interests were served. More than 150 years later, the health disparities of black and white Americans remain. To fix what is wrong today, an understanding of the inequities of the past is, a, is an imperative. Only then can we begin to dismantle the structural racism that is replete within the American system. Knowledge of the history is necessary to explore and identify these underlying mechanisms to understand how racism revives itself to continue to produce health disparities and ways to interrupt it. So, like I said, you know, this whole thing, they, they, you know, you don't want to give them, if, they, if you have to go to the hospital, do not sign those forms giving them the uh, authority for them to do experiments on you, you know. And uh, so now you gotta, you know, bridging the, the divide here in uh, uh, freedoms black people were promised during the reconstruction era never came to be. Black people in the South were still living the abuse of Jim Crow laws. As the 1890s drew to an end, the United States Supreme Court would issue a landmark ruling. And uh, this ruling would introduce such uh, laws known as separate but equal and it would set the stage for systematic racism periods of civil unrest riots and continued inequality for generations to come by the early 1950s black people were working hard to challenge segregation laws public schools were where they found success in 1951 Oliver Brown filed a class action suit against the Board of Education in Topeka Kansas Kansas on behalf of his daughter Linda Brown. Linda Brown was the entrance to an all-white school. The case was called Brown versus the Board of Education and it was heard before the United States Supreme Court. Justices ruled racial segregation of children in public schools was unconstitutional. This law remained the benchmark for education and racial divide in the modern day. Major rallying point for the Civil Rights Movement would follow a year later in 1955 and uh, and uh, Emmett Till, was, uh, was actually from the south side of Chicago, was murdered down in Mississippi. In late 1955, his mother, Mamie, sent Emmett down to uh, Money, Mississippi, to visit his cousins and his great uncle, Reverend Mose Wright. Uh, although Jim Crow laws were in place across the U.S., they were enforced differently depending on the region you were in. The way T uh, Till was treated in Illinois was going to be much different than what he went through in Mississippi. And as we all know, he was murdered, murdered in, uh, in Mississippi. And uh, I'm telling you, man, 
this this whole thing goes on right today and a combination of those two we have officials investigating the use of ketamine in the wake of Elijah McClain's death and Elijah McClain was the kid that got killed over in Colorado when he was walking down the street with the uh, had a mask on and the police jacked him up and then when the uh, so going with the story Colorado health officials have opened an investigation into the use of ketamine a powerful anesthetic in the wake of the death of Elijah McClain who which occurred after he was detained by police and administered the drug an investigation was opened into the Colorado Department of Public Health and environment uh, received numerous complaints regarding the ketamine administration in uh, August 2019 according to the statement from the department although uh, though McLean's death was not explicitly mentioned it was on August 24th 2019 when he was administered the ketamine this is a year ago uh, and uh, the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment did, uh, did not offer any specifics about the investigation except uh, to say it was ongoing. McLean was walking home from buying iced tea at the corner store that evening when he was stopped by police. McLean's family attorney uh, stated and the police received a call about him being sketchy because he was wearing a ski mask, though the caller noted that no weapons were involved and no one was in danger, according to the transcript of the call. When the police stopped McLean, he continued to walk despite being told to stop and a struggle ensued. Officers placed him in a, in a, in a chokehold, which, uh, which involves an officer placing his arm around a person's neck, restricting the flow of blood to his brain and, uh, and the cardioid arteries. Paramedics with the Aurora, Colorado Fire Department also gave McLean ketamine as per their department protocol used for rapid, rapid tranquilization in order to minimize time struggling according to officials. Paramedics also said McLean possibly suffered from a condition called delirium. The condition is typically associated with the use of drugs that alter the dopamine processing, but it is also notably brought, brought up when a person dies in custody of law enforcement, according to a public health report uh, published in 2011. The Adams County Coroner said McLean's autopsy reported that there was a therapeutic level of ketamine in his system though Newman called it an excessive dose he weighed 140 pounds and the dosage he got was for somebody at least twice that weight McLean had been throwing up but and was put in the ambulance where he suffered a cardiac arrest according to the police and the police said he regained consciousness was and was being treated at the hospital he died several days later his death received renewed national attention in the uh, wake of the Flo uh, George Floyd uh, murder and uh, um, and uh, un, uh, it was killed in Minneapolis in May and so uh, the only time you ever hear about excited delirium is in the context of law enforcement agents defending the amount of force they use against a person you'll never hear of a person who is sitting in their living room and then experience excited deliverance delirium uh, ketamine is most commonly used by medical practitioners and veterinarians as an anesthetic. However, between 2017 and July 18, 427 patients in Colorado received ketamine for agitation, according to the state obtained data by the Denver Post. About 20% of those patients were later intubated into the hospital, and no deaths have ever been reported to the state health department as a result of ketamine use. And the district attorney, uh, uh, has, has not pressed any charges against the officers. And so the initial impression was that it was a ketamine that perhaps caused Mr. McLean's death. And it was uh, other than until I received the forensic autopsy report that I learned that in fact, uh, that he had definitely had twice the amount of ketamine for his body weight. So these things are going on, folks. All this stuff is going on, like I said, don't don't give the don't sign no, those content those consent those consent forms if you go to the hospital and they talking about well uh, we want to try we got a new uh, a new drug uh, we want you to sign this consent form whatever you do don't do it because they will be using you 
It's a guinea pig for the coronavirus. KP's video news, y'all. It's KP's video news, y'all. Peace.